Isn't it wonderful to be in the house of the Lord this evening? Yeah, amen. Praise God. We just want to welcome you if you're joining us online. Welcome to First Wednesday. Praise God. Aren't you thankful that we celebrate a time of baptism on this First Wednesday? If you want to stand to your feet. I was thinking about the day I was baptized. And it represents that the old is gone and the new has come and that we can rejoice with those people who have taken a step to follow Christ, amen, and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords and the one who took our sin, put it on, on the cross, buried it, and then we become a new creation in him. That's what the baptism re represents. So let's just worship the Lord together. We have a wonderful service tonight. Um, we're going to have a creative service of um, praying into the um, armor of God. But Pastor Jen, Jeremy and Pastor Jen is going to be leading that. So let's just prepare our hearts to worship the Lord, celebrate with him all the goodness that he has done in our lives, but also in the lives that are around. And let's just give the Lord a praise understanding that when we gather in his name, he is in our midst, amen? So let's just welcome him here tonight, worshiping, preparing our hearts, Lord, to just lean into prayer, lean into all that he has for us tonight. Lord, we're just so grateful that you are in this place. We're so grateful, Lord, that you are our Lord and Savior and the Redeemer of the world. And tonight we celebrate and we're so thankful that people are still responding to your word, giving their life to your word, and Lord, that we get to celebrate that the old is gone and that you give us a new life in you. So Lord, I pray that we would just receive from you tonight, that we would pray by faith with you tonight for, for the things to come. Lord, that we would understand, have a deeper understanding of all that you're doing in and through our lives. But right now, we just give you the praise and the glory. We prepare our hearts to worship you, amen. Come on, friends, let's put our hands together this, this evening. Come on, and we have some friends being baptized. Can we give it up for them? And as they come out of that water, they're going into new life with Jesus. So let's, let's celebrate with them tonight and let them hear it. All right, let's sing it together. Satan fall like lightning I saw darkness run for cover But the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven I believe in signs and wonders I have resurrection power the miracle that I just can't get over My name is registered in heaven And my praise belongs to you forever and This is my testimony from death to life His grace you wrote my story I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous I'm justified this is my testimony, this is my testimony, yeah. oh, oh. Come together, sons and daughters, but with blood and washed in water. Sing the praises of the Spirit, Son and Father, our God. We'll finish what he started, amen. Yes, our God will finish what he started. This is my testimony from death to life. His grace rewrote my story. I'll testify by Jesus Christ the righteous. I'm justified. This is my testimony. This is my testimony. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. We give you praise. Oh, oh. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. 
Greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. And greater things are still to come. Oh, we sing it out. If I'm not dead, then you're not done. Thank you, Jesus. And greater things are still to come. Oh, I believe if I'm not dead, then you're not done. Things are still to come. And this is my testimony from death to life. As grace rewrote my story, I'll testify. By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified. And this is my testimony. And this is my testimony from death to life. Grace rewrote my story, I'll testify By Jesus Christ the righteous, I'm justified This is my testimony, this is my testimony Try to hide you and steal you away. And death tried to keep you inside of the grave. The enemy fought you, he tried, but he lost. Always oh, sing it out. You cannot be stopped When we cried for freedom You tore down the walls The weight of our burdens You carried them on Our fears and our Failures hang dead on the cross. You cannot be stopped. Oh, over of mountains, breaker of chains, Jesus has triumphed over the grave. We sing hallelujah, the battle is won, and nothing can stand. Against our God, oh, we believe it. We stand on your victory and shout out your praise. Oh, oh, miracle maker, your mighty to save. Oh, awesome and power. stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing. Come on, church, with one voice, we sing it out. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing. Come on, there's no fear, there's no lie. There's no power of darkness. Come on. There's nothing that can stop. Oh, you cannot be stopped. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing that can stop our God. There's nothing. There's nothing. 
breaker of chains. Come on. And Jesus has triumphed over the grave. And sing hallelujah. The battle is won. And nothing can stand oh, against our God. Mover of mountains, breaker of chains. Jesus has triumphed over the grave. Oh, we sing, sing hallelujah. The battle is won, and nothing can stand against our God. We believe it.
for your love oh I'll give you all my worship I'll give you all my praise you alone I long to Sing it out, I will give. Praise, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we honor you. We honor you tonight. God, we just surrender everything at your feet, Jesus. We just give you thanks. We give you praise. You and you alone. God, you are our focus tonight. Man, how wonderful, how beautiful it is just to be in your presence, God. There's nothing like your presence, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you. In Jesus' name. And all God's people said, one voice, amen. Come on, can we give the Lord one more hand clap tonight? Hey, church, we're so glad you're here on this first Wednesday. Hey, would you just get out, uh, turn to someone, and greet them, give them a high five, and then you may be seated. Welcome to First Wednesday. We're so excited that you're here. Hey, can you give one more time just an applause to the Lord for those that were baptized tonight? I love baptism service. I love to know the stories of what's going on in people's lives as they're baptized, as they surrender to the Lord. It's just such an exciting time. Hey, last week, my son turned nine years old. It was his birthday. He turned nine years old. And... Um, at our family birthday celebration for him, we were having a talk just about things that kids will face in the years to come and just kind of pondering and wondering what is the world coming to? That's kind of the topic sometimes that conversations turn to. 
And um, what are the, the challenges that he's gonna face? How bad does it have to be before Jesus comes back? Come back quickly, Lord. And we were kind of talking about all of these things and talking about how even when you look at the culture and things that are going on in the world, you can know that there is a spirit of this age that is behind much of what you see. And um, I don't know about you, but sometimes I will get online and I'll scroll and I'll be looking at news stories and, and it just causes a sense of despair and despondency almost when you feed on that and think about what's going on in the world and challenges and you can fear for your kids. How many of you guys, is that just me or anybody else in here? You guys can kind of um, just start to be concerned about what your kids are gonna face. And I was doing that, scrolling through, sitting on my bed, my son was curled up next to me and I was listening to the purr of his very loud snore because <laughs> he had dozed off. And just, I could feel a sense of fear rising up in me. And I felt quickly the voice of the Holy Spirit, the voice of the Lord to me say, they belong to me. They belong to me. We don't have to be afraid. We don't have to live in fear because we know that though there is an evil agenda, there is a spirit of this age, we are partnered with the Holy Spirit. And we know that we are gonna win, that we are partnered with the Lord and that he is gonna win. We're on the winning team, we're on the winning side. We know that our kids are safe. As much as I'm concerned about my own kids, I know that God is concerned for them and cares for them. And we can trust that we have a good father. But as believers, we also have a responsibility to partner with the Lord in some ways. And that's what we're gonna talk about tonight. Can you believe that we're two weeks today from our kids going back to school, being back on campus. And I heard some shouts of hallelujah over here from us be a parent. Yeah, school's starting. Um, and as our kids go back to school, I want you to be equipped to pray over them and feel confident as you send them out. And even for us, as we go into the workplace or as you're praying for your spouse, as they enter their workday, I want you to be equipped to pray over your kids, over your spouse, and over yourself. So we're going to teach you tonight, and with the help of some friends, how to pray through Ephesians 6. Put on the full armor of God. And this is very simple to do. If you are doing your kids' hair in the morning, you can be praying over them. The helmet of salvation, that they their mind is covered by the blood of Jesus Christ. They have the mind of Christ. You can pray that every thought that enters their mind, everything that they're taught, it goes through the blood of Jesus Christ. You can pray over your spouse as you're sending them out into work, that they will pick up the shield of faith, that whatever fiery darts come against them, that they're not even prepared for, that they will have that shield of faith to protect them. You can pray for yourself as you're putting on your shoes in the morning, the shoes of the gospel of peace, that wherever you set your foot, you are a carrier of the peace of Jesus Christ. You can change an atmosphere when you walk into the room. So we're gonna teach you tonight to pray through Ephesians 6. And I would love if they'd put it on the screen and we could read it together. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17 says this, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in his mighty power. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. And after you have done everything to stand, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen, amen, that was good, isn't it? <clears throat> How many of you guys realize this right now, uh, that all of the strength to do what God has called us to do comes from one place, 
and it isn't you. All of the strength, all of the resource comes from God, doesn't it? Right, the psalmist says, I lift my eyes to the mountain, where does my help come from? My help comes from, not from the heavens, not from the earth, right? Not from uh, anybody else around. It comes from the one who made the heavens and the earth. That's where my help comes from, my strength comes from. Some of you guys, I don't know if you even are, are totally uh, sold on that right now, because my help, I'll tell you what, my help comes from the Lord, okay? I just had a kid a few weeks ago. I haven't slept in three weeks. My help is not coming from Jeremy right now. My help is coming from the Lord. So I just want to say, uh, we got had some people get baptized. Who got baptized tonight? Are you guys in the room? Your, your strength to walk out the Christian journey and the Christian life does not come from uh, yourself. It doesn't come from just reading good books. It doesn't come from just good uh, just good music, worship music in 88.3 FM, right? It doesn't come just from the joy ride, although I love it, it's great. It comes from the Holy Spirit. The power of God inside of you is where the strength comes from to walk out the Christian life. So right now we wanna just think about that and process that, that as you put on the armor of God, you are doing that because you need the strength of the Lord, the protection of the Lord. To be the father that I need to be, I need the strength of the Lord. To be the husband that I need to be, dear Lord, I need the strength of the Lord. Right now, and it's not just for me, how many fathers we have in this room? You need the strength of the Lord. How many wives do we have in this room? You really need the strength of the Lord, right? Amen, all the husbands said, no, right? Just stay quiet right there. Man, I'll tell you what, how many times have, have you men in this room gone to do some kind of a, a project or a home improvement project and you get right down to the end and you don't have exactly everything you need and you have to go to Lowe's or Home Depot for the 50th time that day. That happens over and over and over and over and over. You get right down to it, right down to the very end. My wife, you know, she was getting ready to have a baby a few weeks ago and the, the week before our dishwasher goes out, our sink goes out, our dryer goes out, I went out, um, it, was, it was like a whole lot of home improvement. You know, our in-laws came and I'm doing uh, the sink and working on there. And you know what? There was a tool that I did not have to be able to get my sink fitted the way I needed. I couldn't get my hand to it. And you know what I realized in my life? The things that God has called me to do, I don't always have the tools to do what God has called me to do. I need those tools from somebody else. I need them from our divine creator, our Father, through the Holy Spirit in our lives. We need more than you even realize right now. Like I'm joking about it and it's kind of funny, but more than you, you need Jesus. You need the strength just to even make it home tonight. You need the strength some of you guys, you're gonna go out to those, you need it just to be able to get out and eat some tacos at the taco truck tonight. You need the strength of the Lord. It's not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. It's by the spirit of God, amen, amen. The second thing to remember tonight is that our spiritual battles are not against people. How many of you guys know sometimes people tick you off? <laughs> they make you really mad. We live with people and it can be easy to be distracted. We talked Sunday about distractions. Don't be distracted, but be ready. And it can be easy to um, just get distracted and, and get our eyes off who the real enemy is. And instead we start um, sniping at people that are around us or we get frustrated with a person who has a different point of view on social media or we think that it's just a person or a political party or whatever that we're fighting against. How many of you guys know it's not a person? If this is a spiritual battle. Ephesians 6, 12 says that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against every power and principality. This is a spiritual battle. So I wanna remind you to keep your perspective correct that we are in a spiritual battle. 
And it can be easy to get fearful when you realize that we're not wrestling against flesh and blood. But how many of you guys know I love Romans 8.31 that says, if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? I love the way that I grew up li listening to my dad quote this verse. It was, if God be for us, who cares who's against us? Who cares? We're on the side that wins. Uh, I want you guys to read with me Romans 8, 38 and 39. Um, later in the chapter, it says this, for I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. It starts by saying, amen. It's good. It's good. It starts though by saying, I'm convinced. Say that word with me, convinced. Convinced, that means that I don't just think, I don't just kind of know. It means that I know, that I know, that I know. There is nothing that will separate me from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Amen, amen. Uh, man, I was so pumped up tonight. Uh, number one that they did, that old song, uh, I Will Give You All My Worship. I, I, that was pretty That was pretty good. That was taking us way back. Yeah, that was taking me back to like my high school summer camp days uh, for that. And then we would go into, Lord, I give you my heart. Remember, remember that one? Yeah. Uh, we could just sing that and just close right now, right? We just have revival. Holy Spirit comes, rapture happens. Um, I was so pumped up tonight, Pam uh, was singing the worship team and her fiance got baptized tonight. Wasn't that cool? Um, man, I just love, I love seeing that. She got a little choked up right there, uh, but that was so cool just to see that, um, see that moment. And you know, every single person that gets baptized, there's a story. There's a story behind that. How many people have a story? You have your own story, right? We all do. Um, there's going to be a time uh, in the future. What, do you guys have a date yet? September? This September? Oh, my goodness. That's like next month. Are you guys sure? You guys sure? Really? Oh, my goodness. That's next month. Um, there's going to be a moment where you guys start to argue and you're going to think he's the enemy. He's not the enemy. Let me tell you, because I've been married for 10 years now, right? He's, oh wait, no, it's not. It's like nine, huh? Nine, eight? Somewhere, eight or nine? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. 10. 10, we're going to 10. And it's easy sometimes to think just other people are uh, the, the enemy, uh, like Jen's talking about. I love that, that the, the real enemy is Satan, you know? And in churches, we get in churches a lot and we're surrounded by, we're all sheep, right? He's our shepherd and sheep bite, right? You get around sheep and they start biting and nipping, but really it's the adversary behind that sheep and we remember that it is, uh, that it is Satan, right? That we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. And that's why we have to put on that full armor of God. There's a reason why in uh, Ephesians, and we, I love the church of Ephesus because we know more about that church almost than any other church in scripture because we've got the beginning of the church and the birth of church in, in Acts. We've got Paul's writing uh, to Ephesians. We've got in Revelations, we've got um, kind of a, a, a window into the church of Revelation. So we have a lot of history and a lot of understanding about the church in Ephesus. Uh, Paul is writing to them and it's no coincidence that right before the armor of God, he spends most of chapter five and part of chapter six talking about families, about being a parent, about being a husband and a wife, like what it looks like to live in our culture and have a Christian vision for marriage and a Christian vision for submission, mutual submission between each other, what it looks like for us to have, uh, to be godly parents and, and to do that correctly, he goes into chapter six right into, you gotta put on the full armor of God. To be the parent you need to be, to be the husband you need to be, you gotta put on the full armor of God. So you guys ready tonight to pray? And we're gonna pray through these. So if you would stand with me, I'm gonna ask our prayer leaders to come on up. We're gonna just spend some time just going through 
and thinking about the full armor of God. Can you say that with me? Full armor of God. Say it one more time, full armor of God. I'm gonna just pray for you right now. Jesus, I pray right now in this moment that through your Holy Spirit, you would open our ears and open our hearts to fully understand and appreciate what you have done for us, that you have given us truth and righteousness and salvation, and we put on this full armor that you have given us through the Holy Spirit now. And we're gonna pray through those, Father, and I just pray that you would help each and every one of us right now to just engage because there's something that you want to not just not just tell us about, there's something you wanna accomplish. There's something that you want to accomplish right now. So we hear you, we open our hearts to you. In Jesus' name, all right, are you guys ready? All right, here we go. Ephesians 6, 14 says, stand therefore, having girded your waist with truth. Truth, what is truth? If we look to culture, culture tells you that you have your own truth. I have my own truth. But John said it so correctly in chapter one, verse 17, where he says that the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is truth and his word is the truth. His word is factual. It doesn't change, it doesn't waver, it is absolute. And we can use his word in our lives no matter if we are on the rooftop, there's no, or no matter if we are in the valley, especially in the valley. When we are in those dry places, that's where we use God's word. And how do we use God's word? You find a promise, find a promise in God's word that you are experiencing and be like a dog on a bone and you do not let go. You remind God of his word because he who promised is faithful. God is not a man that he shall lie, nor is he the son of man that he shall repent. Has he said and will he not do it? He will do it. And as far as praying over your wives, praying over your husbands, let me give you an example. Hallelujah. Father, I just thank you, Lord, for this gift that you have given me. I thank you for she is bone of my bone and flesh of my flesh. She is the wife of my youth and my wife by covenant. Father, I thank you, Lord, that you bless her in every way. Bless the work of her hands. Lord, let her prosper in all that she does. I thank you, Lord, that you have given her the mind of Christ. Thank you, Lord, for your Holy Spirit that is over her. I thank you, Lord, that she will fulfill the number of her days, that with long life you will satisfy her. And Father, I thank you that she walks in divine health, Lord. For Lord, your promise said, above all things that our souls may prosper and be in health. And Father, I thank you, Lord, for your angels that protect her, that you bear her up and you encamp about her, least she dash her foot against a stone. And Lord, I just thank you that she has favor with you and she also has favor with man. And Lord, I thank you that our marriage, let our marriage be an example for good and let it bring glory to you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you pray over me like that, now I gotta pray over you. <laughs> Hallelujah, Father, I just thank you for this wonderful husband you've blessed me with, Lord. I thank you that you continue to strengthen him from the top of his head to the soles of his feet, Father. I declare that he is the head and not the tail, Father, and that he walks in wisdom, Father, and that he's gifted with wisdom, Father, but most importantly, has great understanding, Father. I thank you that wherever he goes, you lead him and guide him because you said the footsteps of the righteous are 
ordered by the Lord. So Holy Spirit, I thank you for having your way in him, Father. I thank you that he continues to be an example to me and to our friends and to our family, Lord. I just thank you that what you have begun in him, Father, truly you will bring to completion because you are the author and the finisher of his faith, Lord. Lord, I thank you that he walks in divine health, that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. And I say to you today, enemy, you cannot keep him from his destiny. In Jesus' name, I declare that he is the head and not the tail, and I bless him in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6.14 tells us about the breastplate of righteousness. The breastplate of righteousness. Now for me, that protects my heart. And when it protects my heart, then I think it protects my mind. I don't allow myself to go into areas at this point in my life where I used to go. And I, as we reflect on this, it says, did you know that righteousness, our righteousness is within ourselves, within our flesh? Jesus says it's like filthy rags. It's just like filthy rags. Nothing that we can do, nothing that I can do on my best day is still as filthy rags in the sight of my Father. And so to measure up to the standard of holiness, that's why I need the breastplate of righteousness. That's why you need the breastplate of righteousness. So we can measure up to our Father's standards, not ours, because he tells us again, it's like filthy rags. It's useless. It's nothing of ourselves that we can do. I'm grateful for that because I depend on him. That's why uh, it tells us now, it says, instead of filthy rags, I now can, and you now can, clothe ourselves with the righteousness of Christ. Righteousness of Christ. I love it. The righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. All who believe. And that's according to Romans 3.22. You have been set free. I have been set free from sin and have become a slave to righteousness, according to Romans 6.18. If I'm going to be a slave of something, it's going to be of righteousness. It's going to be of the things of the Lord. I'm not going to be a slave to the enemy. I'm not going to be the slave to his tactics, but I'm going to be a slave to righteousness. I love it. Amen? Yes, amen. Let's be a slave to righteousness. Righteousness. When someone comes along and tries to trick you up, no, go back to righteousness. When Trump, someone comes along and tries to change what the Word of God says because they think it's a better way, tell them, no, it's righteousness. Righteousness is what I'm looking after. Righteousness is what I speak. Righteousness is what I talk and I walk. And I thank the Lord for that. I am filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory, and we praise his name, according to Philippians 1.11. Give us strength, God, to walk in the power of your righteousness every single day day. Father, we just thank you for your righteousness. Lord, I pray righteousness over this congregation tonight, Lord God. Let them leave out of here knowing about the righteousness, about the armor of God, Lord. We just thank you tonight, Lord, that they were here again being taught the good things of you, God. We give you honor and glory in your precious and holy name. Amen. Evening church, in that verse, in that armor of God, it says, with your feet fitted with a readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's how we're supposed to walk. Let me ask you, if you're running a marathon or if you're hiking a high mountain, what are you gonna wear? Not flip-flops. You're gonna wear what is required to do that. that. And um, we want to just pray that we're always prepared, that we're always ready. We're always ready to tell people the good news and the peace that they can have in their heart. And Zyla's gonna hear, pray. And let me tell you, kids have just as much of a right to petition the Father as we do, amen? And there's something about me as a father that when I hear my kids pray, it touches me. It goes deeper than any other adult. The kids just have a special place in God's heart. We have to have childlike faith. And so she is gonna lead us in this prayer uh, to get ready for the school year, to be prepared to guard our hearts and minds.
Dear Lord, help us to trust you in all the things. Help us to be prepared always to share the goodness and peace that you bring to our lives. Help us to show your peace that goes beyond our comprehension with every step we take. Let us show light in a dark word and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Guard the hearts and minds of students this year as they start a school year. Parents as they send their kids to school and teachers as they teach the children. Let the children share the good news about you and let them know that they have peace in you and that they are ready to go and share the Word of God. Amen. All right, so the next one is going to be the shield of faith. <clears throat> Ephesians 6.16 says, Above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all of the fiery darts of the wicked one. So Issa's going to share a little bit more about the shield of faith. Amen. Um, we see with the whole armor of God, this is one that we can use on the defensive and also on the offensive. Amen. So uh, according to this context, I was reading earlier that the shields in the biblical times were as big as a doorpost. So don't just imagine you're standing there with the little thing covering up, but we can be bold and know that God, you've given me a shield. Ultimately, he is our shield, amen. We know Jesus is our protector, he's our defender. So we can know that when we come against the fiery darts of the enemy, we can know that, hey, Jesus is right there. He is the one protecting me. So we're just gonna pray. I'm gonna pray uh, for us as a corporate church that we would uh, understand what it is that, hey, when the lies of the enemy come, when the enemy tries to touch us with, whatever he tries to touch us with, we can understand that, God, I don't have to accept it. And two, I can push back just as Jesus did with temptation that, hey, no, the word of God says this. Whatever you say, enemy, no, the word of God says this. So we're just gonna pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. God, I thank you that you're increasing in us to hold up the shield of faith, Jesus, that ultimately it's you and your righteousness and your gospel that gives us protection, God. Ultimately, it's what you did on the cross for us that gives us right standing with you. So tonight, Father, I thank you that any lie of the enemy, anything that has come come against myself or my brethren would just be shot down with the shield of faith, God. I thank you that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So Lord, tonight, would you just increase in us faith, God? Tonight, would you increase in us a boldness and, uh, and just a truth and a revelation to understand, God, with you, I can stand against these lies. I can stand against this disease. I can stand against this thing coming against me. But with you, Jesus, all things are possible. So God, again tonight, would you just increase in us the revelation of what we're supposed to do, that we can have faith as small as a mustard seed and it'll move mountains. And we thank you, Lord, that tonight again, you're protecting us and you are a shield of faith in Jesus' name. Before we go, I'm going to pray over our kids as we get ready to go back to school, educators as well. Um, so I'm going to read 1 Corinthians 16, 13. It says, be on guard, stand firm in the faith, be courageous and be strong. So with that, parents, I encourage you as your children get ready to go to, back to school, you know, pray over them when you're taking them to school, when they're running out the door, whatever it is, whether you're praying over your spouse, if you don't have kids yet, when they're leaving, or even just yourself, but pray for that shield of faith to be risen up and protect you from every plan scheme of attack that the enemy has so i'm just going to pray over our kids right now lord we just thank you and praise you for our kids god as they get ready to go back to school lord thank you for our educators for the people in education lord would you just protect them with your shield of faith would you just pick that up and cover them lord from every plan scheme attack that the enemy is trying to um give it to them, Lord, in Jesus' name. We thank you, God, that our kids are not gonna conform to the things of this world, but they're gonna be transformed, Lord, by the renewing of their mind, and you're gonna protect them, God. When they walk into those classrooms, we thank you, Lord, that the enemy's agenda will be shot down because they have the shield of faith in Jesus' holy name, amen. Amen. Well, I have the pleasure of talking about the helmet of salvation. In Ephesians 6, 17, it says, take the helmet of salvation. Now that helmet, if you think about the Roman helmet, it was the thing that covered and protected their brains, their mind, protected their ears, and it had a little bill in the front to kind of protect their eyes as well. 
And that's what we need to do with the salvation, the helmet of salvation. When we put that on every morning, we're asking God, hey, Jesus, protect my mind, protect my ears, protect my eyes. And for our kids, that's what we need to do. For our family, we need to ask and pray, Jesus, protect their minds from what they are gonna be learning. Protect their ears from what they're about to hear when they go out into the world. Protect their eyes from what they're about to see. And their salvation, you know, the enemy, he wants to stop everyone from getting saved. You know, he comes in like a thief in the night to steal, kill, and destroy. But we know that Jesus paid the price he paid the price for all of us. And when we accept him into our hearts, when our kids accept Jesus into their lives to be their Lord and Savior, they're putting that salvation on. They're putting on the helmet and they're showing the world, hey, I'm a Christian. I believe in Jesus. I'm gonna be the light in the darkness. And so when you are getting your kids ready in the morning, when you're getting their clothes out and you're praying through the armor of God, pray. God, protect their mind. We've been talking about the renewing of our mind, and that's what that helmet of salvation does. It renews their mind. It protects their minds from the things that the enemy might want to tell them, the lies that they may hear, the things that they may see. But we need them to have a renewed mind. They need to speak the truth wherever they go. Let's pray. Jesus, oh, we thank you for our kids. And we thank you that as they leave our house to go to school, uh, Lord, whether that be a public school, a private school, or maybe they're even homeschooled. God, we pray and we thank you that the helmet of salvation is on their heads. God, that you are protecting their minds, you're protecting their ears, and you're protecting their eyes, God. Lord, they're not going to see anything evil. They're not going to hear anything evil. Uh, Lord, you're going to be renewing their mind every single morning. Uh, the blood of Jesus covers them. And we thank you that as they go about their day, wherever they go, they are your light. They're your ambassador to this world. And God, Lord, that they speak your truth. Uh, Lord, that when other kids see them in their classrooms, when those teachers see them, when they're in the grocery stores, wherever they go, people will look at them and know there's something different about that child. Or they will see that it is you shining bright inside of them. Lord, I thank you for their boldness and confidence to speak forth and, and speak salvation to everyone that they know. Uh, Lord, that they would continue to shine bright for you and speak your truth in all places. Lord, that fear would escape their minds and they would be bold like a lion. And uh, we love you in Jesus' name, amen. Good evening. Good evening. We're here to talk about the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. Which is the word of God. And I love that because the Bible says in the beginning was the word and the word became flesh. Meaning that the word is alive. It's, it's living. It has substance. Amen. And I always um, teach my family to, when we do pray, to pray the word, to speak the word. Um, the other night, I was, I was walking by my daughter's um, door, and she was worshiping. She was on her guitar. She was singing. The girl can sing. She can play the guitar. She taught herself. And I just sat at her door, and I just was listening and crying. And I was just in, my, my wife, that's why I always be in tears when she sings. I'm just like, it's so awesome to me. You know, I always tell her mom, she got it from me, you know, singing stuff, you know. But, um, and I was just at her door, and I was just start thinking. I wonder, does she know what she's saying? And she was singing, my house is built on you. And so that night, usually we get her in the room and we interrogate her and give her the word and just talk to her about life. And, and I asked her, I said, baby, do you know what you were singing? She was like, yeah, but I still wasn't sure. Like, do you know what you were singing? So I opened up my Bible and I, and I showed her about the man who built his house on the sand, the man who built his house on the rock. And the rock is the word of God. And the man who built this house on the sand, the winds and the waves, they came and they tore that house down because his house was not built on the word. But the man whose house was built on the rock, those same winds, those same storms, they came. See, as Christians, we still can go through the same things. 
We can go through um, uh, depression. We can go through anger. We can go through divorce. We can even commit crimes. But the difference is they won't tear us down. We'll always hold on to the rock, which is the word of God. And so when I, when, I, when, I, when I pray over my family, I pray the word of God. So I teach my wife to pray the word of God, to learn the word of God so that we can pray the word of God over our families. Even when I, when I wake up and, and I, before I go to the gym or when I get getting ready in the mirror, I say, you are fearfully and wonderfully made. You are God's prized possession. God thought so much of you that he sent his son to die for you and he knew everything that you would do wrong. And he still sent his son. That is the word. The word is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. The word is that we are not conquerors. We are more than conquerors. So I pray that over myself. I pray that over my family. Um, I, I, I teach my daughters the word of God because it's so powerful. The word of God saved my life. The word, of, the word of God saved me from game banging, from prison. The word of God saved my marriage. So I truly believe that the word of God is the most powerful thing in the world because the word of God is Jesus. Amen. The word of God is Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm going, I'm, going, I'm going to just pray over my wife for demonstration, but I mean all that I'm saying because I love you so much. This is my, y'all know this is my real, this is my chocolate rib. Amen. Um, gracious Heavenly Father, I just come to you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for my good thing, Father God. I thank you for my favor, Father God. I thank you for the wife that you have given me, Father God. I thank, that how she t thank you how she, for how she takes care of me and of my children, Father God. How she's a virtuous wife, Father God. How she goes above and beyond to take care of her family, Father God, to make sure that we're straight. She would not rest her mind until her family is taken care of, Father God. And I know that's something that you placed in her, Father God. She is an awesome helpmate, Father God. She is an awesome co-leader with me and this family, Father God. We advise each other. We look to your word, Father God, for our guidance, Father God. And so I just ask you, Father God, to bless her heart, to bless her mind, Father God. Let her life be built on what you say, Father God, not what man must say, would say, Father God. When anybody in the enemy tries to devalue her, Father God, your word will reign in her heart, Father God, that she is yours, Father God, that she belongs to you, that she was bought with a price, Father God, more valuable than silver or gold, Father God. She was bought with the precious, life-giving blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you. <laughs> um, so I am just going to piggyback off of what he's saying about the word of the Lord. We know the word of the Lord is our strength. We know the word of the Lord is our sword, as the word says. And as just about a week ago, I was talking to my husband and I told him, I need you. I need you in every manner of the word. And the word of the Lord is our foundation. And when we slip away from that in our marriage, everything else starts to be a little shaky. Everything else starts to, to fall away. And that um, goes back to us being on the solid rock of the word of the Lord. So I started to think of the order of marriage and it goes God, the husband, the wife, the children, and the foundation is the word. And I was telling him, I said, I saw this thing on Instagram and the pastor, he was saying that the happiness doesn't ma matter in a marriage, the holiness does, the word of God does. If you're seeking out happiness in your marriage without the word of God, without the sword, which is the word, then your marriage is gonna fail. And so I told him, I said, I need every part of you. I'm not utilizing all of you if I'm, if I'm not utilizing the man of God you are. He said, yeah, you got a whole preacher right here. <laughs> And I said, I need that whole preacher. I need that word that God has placed within him. So that's the prayer that I'm going to pray. Letting God knows, God know that I need him. And when I pray for him, I tell God, I need that man of God. I need that man that's in your word. I need that man that's my protector. When I looked at him, he was my protector. He wasn't this big when I first married him. He was about 150 pounds, but I still saw that protector. Because God showed me that. So in order for him to be that protector that I need, that I saw 18, 19 years ago, I need for him to be in the word. So that's going to be my prayer over him. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I come to you just right now thanking you 
for my husband, Father God. Thanking you for the strength that you place within him, Father God. Thanking you for the mind that you have given him to seek out your word, Father God, to seek out your sword, Father God, so he can defend me, his family, Father God, and those you have appointed to him, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that you just continue to bless him to excel in your word, Father God. Continue to use your word properly, Father God, as he protects us, Father God, as he protects and defends your truth, Father God, as a preacher, as a man of God, as the man that you have blessed and appointed to me and my family, Father God. My daughters need him. Our sons need him, Father God, to be that man that's after your truth, Father God, seeking to protect us, Father God, seeking to learn and to continue to excel in your word, Father God. I pray your blessings over him, Father God. As he goes out, Father God, he will represent you. And as he's coming in, Father God, he will leave nothing but the foundation of your truth, Father God. And I thank you for him, Father God. And Jesus, we in holy name, amen and amen. Amen, amen. That's good. Is that Pastor Lindsay over there? Is that Pastor Lindsay back there hiding? She's got her little baby. Look at that. Uh, little Easton. Wait, actually, I don't know. Is that Easton? Not a different baby? Okay. There's Melissa. Uh, that, look, oh, look, there's another. We just, oh, Melissa. We just got babies for days over here, right? Um... Man, look around you. Look at the, the people around you. You are not just a solo person tonight. Uh, you are putting on the armor of Christ because you're part of the army of Christ tonight. You are not uh, an assassin. You are not a vigilante. You're not just on your own. But look around. You're in the army of the Lord. You guys remember that song? I may never march in the infantry, ride in the cavalry, shoot the artillery. I may never fly over the enemy, but I'm in the Lord's army. Right, right? Look around you. You're in the Lord's army. You're not just a private assassin in your own little thing, in your own little troop. You are in the army of the Lord, and the army of the Lord uh, is is filled with brothers and sisters that are around you. You are not alone tonight. You hear me? You're not alone tonight. You're not in a foxhole alone by yourself. You're in the army of the Lord tonight. And I just want to tonight remind you of that, to look around you and to remember that you are a part of the Lord's army. And as you go out tonight and you guys have uh, whatever food trucks are out there, a burger or a taco or a acai. Some of you are wondering how to pronounce that. That's how you pronounce it, acai. That, uh, spend some time with somebody tonight and affirm that belief that we are uh, in the army of the Lord. Uh, I just want to pray for you. Jesus, uh, we just come to you tonight and I pray for my brothers, my sisters, my friend, my faith family here tonight, that you would remind us to put on the armor of the Lord because we are in an army and we are in a battle and there's a real adversary. And so tonight we put on the full armor of God and we look around us, God, and we celebrate that we are in uh, the winning army. We're not just on uh, the sideline, but we are in the battle uh, with the army of the Lord. We love you, Father. I pray right now as we just worship you that you would uh, just let your spirit uh, just rise in this place and that you would seal this word into our hearts. In your name we pray, amen.
Declare this tonight. Who can stop? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Who can stop the Lord? Yeah. 